Yo, this is the Egyptian lover. You're checking out Splash Mag, baby. <laughs> started out with a dance production crew called Uncle Jam's Army. Oh my goodness. Uncle Jam's Army was a huge dance promotion group. So they um, gave parties all over LA. Um, small parties, like in hotels, like Holiday Inn, ballrooms and stuff like that for like the smallest 300 people up to 500 people in these, in these hotel parties. And then they grew and got bigger and they started doing um, bigger parties like at... Um, a place called Alpine Village that had maybe 600, 700 people to 800 people. And then the Veterans Auditorium had maybe 1,200 people, 800 to 1,200 people. They even did the um, the convention center that held 2,000 people. And they did that with other dance promotion teams so they didn't get all the people to pack in there. Well, I joined them in 82 and started DJing for them. And my style of DJing made more and more people interested in who's this new DJ and because Uncle Jim's Army was already popular. So by adding me, it was just like putting icing on the cake. And so I started DJing for him. And um, the style I was doing was actually my pause button mixtape style that I created with two turntables instead of a tape deck pause button. So my style of mixing was like just tape edits. And I used to do that and got better at it. And then we got so popular, every dance we did was sold out. Then we had to do bigger parties, and then we was doing more parties at the Veterans Auditorium, and it still was sold out every time we did it, so I said, let's do something bigger. So we went to the L.A. Sports Arena, and we did that for 10,000 people and still sold it out. So we did that three times. And by that time, my turntable skills had got so good that I started playing records backwards and, and just doing all kind of tricks, and, and everybody just loved it. It was a new thing for Los Angeles, a new thing for the music industry, and, and, and period. Nothing like that ever happened in L.A. Um, I made Dollar Freak and Yes, Yes, Yes with Uncle Jam's Army. Of course, I put my name on Dollar Freak and all that. But then I went at another record just to say my name all the way through so everybody know who I was when I was DJing. I wanted to play the record while I was DJing so they know who I am. And so I did Egypt, Egypt, Egyptian Lover. And um, didn't know it was going to be a, a big hit or anything like that. I just wanted a record to play at the, my parties at Uncle Jam's Army's next sports arena party. But the radio took it and played it to death. <laughs> Flipped it over, played the other side of the record as well. MLB goes boom, what is a DJ if they can't scratch, the ultimate scratch. And all four of these records with Egypt, Egypt was being played on the radio every hour on the hour. And more and more people was requesting it. One time the, the, the main DJ for K-Day called me up and said, come down to the radio station, I want you to answer the request line. So I went down there and I'm like, why? He's like, I just want you to hear this. So I answered the request line and maybe nine out of the first 10 calls was for my record. I'm like, did you set that up? He said, no, it's been like this for the last two weeks. And every phone call I got, can I hear Egyptian Lover? Can I hear Egyptian Lover? He says, you have a hit record on your hand. I was like, I don't even know what that felt like. I never had a, you know, never thought about a hit record. And Egypt Beach just blew up from there. It just went crazy all over the world. I was playing stuff like um, Planet Rock, Scorpio by Grandmaster Flash, um, Electric Kingdom, some Tour de France, and, and Telephone Call, and um, Murder Rock by Reggie Griffin. So I was playing all the up-tempo, high-energy hip-hop that, that, that was out at the time. We had some stuff from Miami, from Pretty Tony, had some Cybertron, Clear, and um, Technicolor. And it, it was just all high-energy, good, fun dance music. So when I went in the studio to make my solo record, Egypt, Egypt, all these ideas of mixing these records together came together, and I made Egypt, Egypt. So Egypt, Egypt's like um, three different records all mixed together to make one record. Well, when I heard Planet Rock, it was the best sounding drum that I ever heard in my life. So a friend of mine told me what drum machine that was, Africa Islam. He actually lives in Berlin now. And Africa Islam told me it was the Roland 808 drum machine. I'm like, what's a drum machine? And so um, we went to the, the records, I mean, the music store, and I saw the 808 drum machine. I programmed a couple of beats. The store 
employee helped me program Planet Rock on the 808. And when I heard it, I just said, wow, this sounds like actually better than the record. And so I started doing other things to the 808, so I had to have it. So I bought the, bought the 808, took it home, filled it with a bunch of beats, took it to the next Uncle Jam's Army Sports Arena party. And everybody was screaming, what record is that? What record are you playing? And they were just partying for like eight minutes to just a drum machine. And they thought it was just different records I had bought. Every time I hit a different pattern, a different beat would play, and they thought it was a different record. And I looked over at the guy from Uncle Joe's Army and said, we need to make a record. Look, look at the 10,000 people partying into a drum machine. And so it was like, yes, we got to make a record. <laughs> Everything we were doing, everything musically for Uncle Jam's Army, everything we were playing was hip hop. So like Planet Rock was hip hop, Pretty Tony was hip hop, um, Scorpio from Grandma's Flash was hip hop, Electric Kingdom was hip hop, Cybertron, um, Clear was hip hop to us. I mean, it was all it was all just rap music with up tempo beats. So what Uncle Jam's Army did, what Egyptian Lover did, was same thing. Hip hop was just club music, dance music, and so it wasn't nothing else. I mean, when they talk about Gangster rap as being hip hop, yeah, it was too, but it wasn't the first hip hop. I mean, there was many records that came out of LA before 1988 when the second album of NWA came out. And my stuff came out in 84, and what is a DJ if you can't scratch? It's hip hop. So when you play the other side of Egypt, Egypt, and you hear, what is a DJ if you can't scratch? That's hip hop. So is Egypt, Egypt, it's on the same album. Um, well, techno to me is like that Detroit sound, so it's kind of like electro as well. Techno and electro is very similar. Um, I hear some techno things that sound housey, some sound more electro, but um, I think it's just electronic dance music in, in, a, in, a gener in general all together. And all the DJs playing techno eventually pl had played my stuff when it came out in 84, 85. So I know all of them, they all love me, and I appreciate all of them. So that's why I made this new album, 1984, to sound exactly like the, the records I did in the beginning, but new. Because a, a couple of um, young DJs came up to me. They said, man, I wish I had grew up in your era when, when these records were new. And I said, you know what? I'm working on a, a brand new album, and it's for you who missed that era. You can live that era all over again with my new album. And now it's new for you and, and everybody else. And, they, they called me up and they said they love every single track on the album. There's 12 tracks on there. And they said they can't believe that somebody would actually spend that kind of money to go to the real studios, to get it mastered professionally, to put it out on vinyl, CD, cassette, and just do it like they did back in the old days. Since I have my own record label, there is no rules. So I can do what I want to do anytime I want to do it. And I decided to do it the old fashioned way and show the world that it still can be done this way. Money is no object, let's, let's just do it. Well, 1984 was the first year I made my album. So I went to the studios, the same exact studios I did my first album on the now. I went to the same exact studios, used the same exact um, gear in the studio, used the same exact equipment I recorded my albums on, like the 808, the Jupiter A, the SH-101, the same vocoder, the SVC-350, and all these sounds in the real studio, professional studio, through the SSL board, sound exactly the same as they did back in the day. So we just did the whole album like that, and wow, it's amazing. F to hear digital music for the last 10 years, and then hear this one, it's like, okay, this is that warm sound we don't know how to get. Well, you can get it if you go to the pro studio and do it the old-fashioned way with analog gear. So, I mean, I actually played the Sydney Opera House and it was just amazing to see that building and know that I was getting ready to play in that building. It was like, wow, this is a dream come true. And the fans are just fans of music. So no matter where you go all around the world, it's just people who love music. So they love whatever kind of music. So when they hear me, they know that I'm old school. And they listen to Egypt, Egypt. They love the video from Freakaholic. They all watch it on YouTube. And they love that old style. And so it's just like uh, back in time throwback. And you get to see me live. And I bring the 808 out. And they love hearing the 808 live through the speakers, through the clubs. The bigger the speakers, the bigger the boom. And they love it.
Well, I love I love every sound on the 808. I mean, the snare, the toy snare, the the hi hats, the clap, the rim shot, the bass, where you can just have a regular kick drum or turn the decay up, and make it longer, boom. And I just love the overall sound of the 808. And I love it at myself. I love it at 128 beats per minute. And this is just psh, a dream for me. So most of the songs on the 1984 album is 128 beats per minute. And every one gives you a different feel. And just it's something that I'm proud of. Yeah, this is one of the beats um, I have in my 808. Right now I'm going to play the kick and the clap. I love this 808 kick. that inspire me and those people that I saw around me who might not have been doing some great things I saw that as an example and was like oh maybe I should not do this and I should do this instead and, and uh, if I want I don't got a wife at home <laughs> get it paint him show him show him show him no, I'm not part of the group <laughs> I'm not performing anywhere 